Welcome Bout Betters! I've yet to make my main event picks because I was going to pass on betting all these fighters. Some of these people have been some of my best bets and tickets that I've cashed the past couple of years. Last time out, I was behind Sanhagen as well as Peter Yan. I was holding a bunch of parlay tickets with each of their names in it, all mushed to the judges and a controversial finish. Yes, gambling is a game of winning at winners and losers. If you had a sterling ticket to win by finish, you cashed that. Uh, yes, he won by finish. That goes for the round totals and the round props as well. If you were on his side, you got the cash, whereas I was on the other side and I didn't cash any of my Patreon tickets. Glover and Jan have also been st steady money makers for myself. Glover is his game as it gets, and so is Jan Blakovich. Living legends, how you know, with the ability and performances to back it up, the legendary Polish power. Both of them have similar UFC stories, but what a fairy tale ending it could be for uh, Glover Tuxera. We are hoping for a finish in this bout. But I'm being tempted by the Rivers fight parlays. They have Glover at plus 550 and the not to go the distance. I don't think I'm going to bother, like I've mentioned, on going with this. I am interested in rounds three and four at plus 350. I really don't want to take a side in this bout. Since they're just two good money makers, I'd really not like to, like others, don't want to have the stress. Want to just enjoy this to enjoy it. That possibly could be said of the Sanhagen. Um, a pair to pair to Jan bow, but I don't think so. Let's see what's going to happen there. I have to look at, you know, I've been looking at the alternate winning combination offerings. The submission offerings are real meetings, meaty as well. I'm going to try and not place a side here, nor a winning outcome. Just enjoy this bout. That being said, I want to give you a little quick rundown of what I thought earlier in the week. Yes to go the distance is plus 162, so Vegas leans on a finish as not to go the distance is minus 225. The under is set at 2.5 at minus 115. I like the over 2.5 in this instance. Vegas sees Jan finishing Glover as he is plus 100 uh, by that finish. Glover by finish is plus 325 and plus 700 by decision. Jan is plus 1200 by submission while Glover is plus 700. This is a Another tough pick for me if I were to play this. Both guys have about the same amount of ring time or a lot of ring time with the same XR number that I always mention. I have Jan also in my Hail Mary parlay. That's just a fun parlay. But Jan can be controlled as I've, I've noticed in some of his bouts. He has almost been controlled four minutes per bout. Glover spends twice the percentage amount of time in control as Blakovich. I think Glover may have a slight grappling advantage and won't be off on the feet here. Glover is, I watched this one Korean uh, YouTube, uh, uh, capper picker probably. I didn't understand the language, but I sort of got the, the imagery since he thought of Glover as sort of a Homer Simpson fighter that really can come back. And they really sh he really demonstrated it in his video. I'll leave a link to this description if I could find that again. Yes. The play here is to enjoy yourself, enjoy the, 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 for this for MMA, not to stress yourself out being uh, monetarily involved in this main event. Such a great story, fantastic for free, there all day, will be there no matter what. Money is continuing to pour in on Corey Sanhagen, but and he is still nicely priced at plus 185, but I don't know if it's wise to wait until fight time to jump on him as well as some other of the underdogs like Michel Olojeshuk. After the weigh-ins last night, I jumped on Hu Hugh Yashong. Uh, he looked really good in the weigh-ins. Petrovsky does gas, and let's see how long and how this effect, this trip affects all the Americans or other people that are coming from a, far, a longer part, a different part of the world. It's going to be tough making that tra transition. We saw how poorly Ismagulov did. I was on Demir Ismagulov, a minus 278 favorite versus Magomed Mustafaev at plus 220. Now I am on Mustafaev. I mean, Demir was going to be in a close battle anyways. So if that fight is on, Demir looks so bad and possibly genuinely drained of weight, and unlike another Russian fighter that we'll talk about possibly later. But I really think that Mustafaev is going to come in here. He looked fantastic in the weigh-ins. So that is another spot you might want to take a look at. But back to the co-main event, Corey Sanhagen now at plus 180 underdog against Peter Jan. I don't recall. I have it written out down at minus 250. It's changed since then. Hate when this happened. Two of my favorite fighters that I've cashed in so many ways and then not cashed. I got burned 
uh, uh, last time, <laughs> Corey Sanhagen uh, going out as well as Petrion. But you know, it was it's a tough loss. But you know what I've written here is yes to go the distance is minus one two five under four and a half is at plus one oh five. So Vegas really sees this going the distance. Yan is favored to win by decision at plus one fifty or finish at plus one eighty. The line is wide on a Sanhagen finish at plus four seventy five and plus four hundred by the decision. This is why I'm tempted to be on the Corey Sanhagen side. All honesty, I'm a value better in terms of I don't have a bit very large bankroll. I don't make very large wager amounts and very large increments until I make some money, and then I do. Um, but by this point, I think it's still if I had just the start of my bankroll, you know, just say say it was a hundred dollars, I would put a quarter on Corey Sanhagen, possibly uh, on the money line, but I would probably split something else uh, to get him by the finish and or decision just because it is a, a, such a good payout. I don't know if that makes sense to anybody else, but you try it in a different instance in your possible favorite. You could split pay uh, you know, a, an underdog or a favorite on the money line and put some of the money on a prop bet. I do most of my action on prop bets, especially in this event. It's going to be propped out for me big time, so I'm going to have a stack of losing tickets in the end and i just hope that the amount in places where i've placed the winning uh, prop tickets or or whether it's a totals bet or a uh, a method prop uh, yes uh, i know i'll have a stack by the end of the evening and i hope to have a small profit at the end that's just what's going to happen to me i already in anticipate that and i and i and talk to me about that in the comment section let's get back to this about and I'm going to stop my rambling. San Hagen is championship materials. He is so good, but maybe he's just in the wrong era. Now I thought of that. Like he's had so many other so many good fighters at this time that he would have problems with. So he his his and he talks about what his best attributes are, his, his physical attributes, being so long, so lean. He's able to get people in some really awkward spots, and he really strikes very awkwardly. But I think this is going to be end up a kickboxing match where both these guys are masters. Uh, this is going to be close, and I think the line should be tighter. So if you're on the Sanhagen side, I think you're getting a good deal. If you're on the Pertrian side, you could wait till this closes a little bit because there might be some more money. I saw Corey Sanhagen seems to be getting some steam today, but let's see what ha that happens at the uh, you know at fight time. But back, I see uh, Jan being just more efficient and effective with the striking. You know, he has the slight power advantage, and that's going to work on Sanhagen. The, you know, we saw last week, even when Paulo Costa uh, would hit uh, Vittori and, and Vittori would block, it would still do a lot of damage. And that's going to be the, the same for Corey Sanhagen and Pertrian. But Pertrian looked in phenomenal shape at the weigh-ins. He looked incredible. And he has the ability to avoid Corey Sanhagen's kicks. He's very uh, octagon aware. He could dip under those and go for a takedown if he wanted to. You know, to someone like Petrion, Corey Sanhagen's movements are very telegraphed. Uh, Petrion, you know, master of sport. Uh, it's from boxing. Strong, strong, strong uh, striking pedigree, but with strong grappling as well. I think that if this goes to the floor, it is going to be a problem, you know, for Pertrian, but he's just going to have to avoid those scrambles, and he's so good at getting out of them. I just think Pertrian is just better everywhere. I, I wouldn't hate you if you chase Sanhagen. Sanhagen by submission is plus 1,400. Him by TKO is plus 400. I don't think necessarily that that's his win condition. Vegas does see this going to a decision. So I would just try to enjoy this, but I might jump on one of the bets here. I think that there is... Uh, value even in the Pertrian, po possibly by finish, for example. Uh, I just haven't made a decision yet, and I'm happy if I pass this. I think I have action spread around throughout this event. It's such a big event. There's 14 fights, so don't worry where you think you might be hurting. You could make it up some other how, but definitely have a plan going in. You have a list of where possible fighters and other options you might have, whether it's a prop bet uh, or a straight money line bet, have options uh, if you tend to fall behind in the day of gambling, which I do. In the people's main event, or just another fantastic bout, Islam Makachev, Dan Hooker. Man, the only question here this Saturday is Joey asks, is can Hooker win this bout? 
Islam is not Khabib, and him just because he, he and DC are anointing him the next 155 champion with their belts doesn't make him a champion. He still has to do the work. He still has to earn it. Dan Hooker is a pro, and he is getting into an opportunity. But my goodness, what a G this guy is to try to hop in there again. Islam Makachev. That's that's an you could look at it as an opportunity or an ending because the guy could really hurt you. A win definitely gets him into the title picture, as does Islam Makachev. This is very, very important bout for each of these men, and it's a huge risk for Hooker. He could easily coast it to other uh, bouts. He needed, I guess, he needed the money. He needed to put himself back into the title picture, and this will do it. This is a striker versus grappler match, as everyone's men mentioned. The st striking metrics all favor Dan Hooker. Hooker has a better RX number by four points, but that's expected. Uh, the expected round percentage number or XR percent of 60% to Islam's 86%. Uh, expected round percentage, which is not good. Hooker has excellent takedown defense at 80%, but against Islam, it's going to be a whole different matter. That number doesn't translate into this match. Uh, you know, it, you know. Of course, Hooker said it had 65 takedown takedown attempts shot against him, while being controlled an average one and sort of one and a quarter minutes per fight. So Dan Hooker's in a lot of problems here. If he gets on that fence, Islam decides to change levels. I don't know if Hooker. He definitely has the length to possibly do very good at his takedown defense, but he's going to have to do everything to keep this on the feet. And he, the, the fortunate thing is it, it is going to be in the larger octagon. So we'll thing working against Hooker is that Islam's striking defense is fantastic. He absorbs barely one strike per minute, and that's because he's always in control position most of, uh, of his fights. An average eight minutes per fight, he is in control, which is staggering. I mean, it's just amazing. But where is his superior striking on his resume? You know, he really hasn't fought somebody like Hooker. Again, his stats are such that because he seeks control at all costs, so he makes the strikers look like they just they just look like they can't do anything and that's what i think most of vegas and everyone expects to happen here i don't think uh, you know islam has ever been over 100 strikes uh, in a fight i think he his most is 92 in his career hooker is the best striker by far that islam has faced if islam is stepping up a level of competition here islam does have the power behind his punches and can't hurt hooker at distance or in the clinch but hooker can eat punches and he's going to have to have sniper Islam, and I think Hooker will have that reach and be have that ability to pepper Islam and annoy Islam. Uh, Islam is very slow to get off, which it can be a fault for him. His movement, you know, will he'll remain at range Islam for a while, but he's going to have to come in and take down Hooker. Uh, or else Hooker will and can piece him up on the feet all day. I mean, it, Hooker will stay, stand and just pepper him all day. So I think Hooker can do this. I think he could stuff some takedown. And if he stuns Islam here just with a couple strikes, that, you know, that chin ch might be checked. And I could see Islam going to sleep. So I'll take uh, Hooker on at plus 450 and him by finish. I know it's a long shot. But that's what we do. Sometimes we take those long shots. It makes it a little bit more exciting. I'm not throwing very much on it. Don't recommend it. Just put it as a fun sprinkle. Have a good fight this weekend and, and enjoy that pop. Another bout I am glad I was not invested in as a parlay piece. Kamzat Chimeyev, he looked horrible at the weigh-ins. Not really looked horrible. I think more so he is pulling a Paulo Costa here. Not very happy from somebody who, uh, it's, they. So what's, what's going on there at AKA with these guys and the weight misses and the cheating on the towel? That was really disturbing. It really is disturbing for me because now I don't really know whether to back Li Jing Lang uh, because Kamzat is compromised or Kamzat was cheating and pretending he was compromised in order to gain that advantage like we saw Paulo Costa do or he actually Paulo Costa did, which was even worse. So this, I, again, I was afraid. What? Why didn't Kamzat? It was about six pounds. Maybe that COVID did affect him. So how is this going to affect him in the fights? I think at this point, because of that, I'm, I'm going to lay off of it. If I see that number increase and people keep coming up on comms at or other people like myself are waiting to, to back Li Jing Lang, I'm going to jump on Li Jing Lang uh, possibly th this evening or by uh, tomorrow at fight time in the morning. 
but I'm glad that I stayed out of this uh, for parlays because this is MMA, MMA as well as any sports. Anything can happen. Any of these favorites can break a hand, uh, hurt their foot, uh, bruise a rib, uh, eye poke this, knee that. We've seen it all. So betting, as I mentioned earlier, if you went off in early betting on all these giant favorites, I think you made a mistake. But that's okay. Nobody really listens to me in anything, including this. So that's all right. But remember to comment, like, and subscribe, and you can put your opinion on why you do it uh, there. I'd be happy to address it, but that's just me. I do make some some plays like that often, but not on this card when I saw those Russians. No way. So this is going to be a fun, fun, fun main event. I'm looking forward to it. I've done my research. I'm ready to go. I go into it like, like these other guys. I go in there with my ammo, with my my training, my the, my the research that I've done, the stats I got here, these stupid notes, and then sometimes I still end up breaking even, losing some money. But of late, actually, I'm on the winning path. Uh, I hope you are too. Let me know what you're doing to possibly win uh, this weekend. It's a tough card, so if you make some money this weekend, big, big props to you and congrats. I'm going to be playing dogs, so I know a lot of my tickets are going to be burned, but hopefully some of these dogs turn out. I will have some other plays. I'll let you know in the comment section. Hit the bell notification. Thank you very much to anybody who's listening to all these ramblings. Very appreciated.